is a paradox. Am I right? Yes. You, he said, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. So what is he saying? I believe, but I don't believe. So I, I, you have to think about this a while. I said, I think about stuff like this over years. I believe, but I don't believe. What does the Bible say? A double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. Let him not believe. Let him not think that he shall what? Receive anything of the Lord. So if you believe and you don't believe, then what? You ain't getting nothing. If I believe, but I have unbelief, you know, it's like like one plus a negative one equals what? Zero. If I believe, but I have unbelief, then in essence, I don't have faith, and let me not think that I shall receive anything of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting thing. I thought about this. I said, the man said, I believe. Well, where's the proof that he believed? Well, Belief or faith is the action on your belief. So he had enough faith to do what? To bring his son, right? He did have enough faith to bring his son. He had enough faith to look for Jesus, and he had enough faith to bring his son. But when he spoke to Jesus, when Jesus showed up and he spoke to Jesus, he said what? If. Messed up right there. That's where he messed up. He had enough faith to bring him, but then when he, after he brought him, he spoke to God and said, now if you can do anything. Well, if you just negate it. The whole thing. Yeah. If, yeah. if Jesus looked at him and said, "Well, if you can believe, then all things are possible. If you can, if you can trust me." So he had a problem, and I'm here to tell you that a lot of us are the same way. Amen. Watch this. The man brought his son to Jesus, but he wasn't sure, as as evidenced by the words that came out of his mouth, that Jesus could actually do what the man brought his son there to be done. Many of us come to church, we got enough faith to come to church, but we don't actually believe that after we come, God can do what we came to church for God to do. Somebody say amen. 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 Just because you showed up in church don't mean you believe. Watch this. Just because you came to listen to the word doesn't, believe, doesn't mean that you actually believe that the word that you hear can change your life. Y'all right. yes. yes. not praying for me. Just because you came and you opened your ear didn't mean you actually added faith to that to say, you know what? Because you know why? Because if you really believe, there's always going to be some proof. There's always going to be an action based upon your belief. Amen? Amen. So Jesus, the man was, but at least the man was honest. He said, I believe to help me with my unbelief. At least he was honest, huh? Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, at least he was honest, huh? And some of us need to be honest, too. Some of us need to be honest enough to say, you know what? I got some unbelief, and I need to deal with that thing. I come to church. I come to Jesus. I, I come bringing my problems to Jesus, but I'm not really 100% convinced that he can heal what I have to deal with. Say amen. amen. Now, here we go. Going back to Matthew, verse 17. Then Jesus answered, Matthew 17, 14, uh, verse 17, verse 17, next, next, next one. Verse 17 said, then Jesus answered and said, look at Jesus' response when that man said, if you can do anything. He said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. One translation says, how unbelieving you are. How unbelieving you are. Notice, this, notice that it says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. He didn't say, O oh, faithless and perverse man. He said generation, which made it sound corporate like everybody else who was there. But we know who he was in the conversation with, right? Yeah. We just found out who he was talking to. The man said, he said, if you can do anything at all, help, help a brother out, help us out. And Jesus said, well, if you can have a little faith, then, I, then maybe I can do something. In other words, be careful because your lack of faith can be holding up Jesus. Be careful because your lack of faith could be the very thing that is stopping Jesus from being able to do what you wanted to do anyway. In other words, God's got his part. The problem is not God. The problem is us. Amen. We got to make sure that we see God has the grace. We just need the faith. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I said he has the grace. Yes. See, I didn't even get a lot of amens right there. See, everybody should say amen. I said God has the grace. Yes. We need the faith. The faith that it takes to release his grace. Amen. Ha! You got it. The faith. Somebody say the faith that it takes. The faith that it takes. 
See, the point is, it does take a certain kind of faith. And he just admitted, the man said, I'm sorry, but I'm admitting, he said, I, I, I help me with my unbelief. Well, it, it's, like I told the ministers today, it's one thing uh, to not know something, but it's another thing to not know something and act like you know something. It's better if you don't know something to just say, I don't know that I don't know. In other words, if I don't have faith, just be honest and say, help me with my, I'm serious. At some point, you got to say, God, grace me to believe. Because the problem is not your lack of grace. The problem is not your lack of power. So therefore, it must be my lack of faith. Thank you. Somebody say, God, God Father, Father, grace me, grace me. to believe. Give God some praise. Grace me to believe. I need it. Because look what Jesus said. Jesus said, oh, you faithless and perverse generation. He said, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? That sounds like Jesus got a tune on him. He did. Now, that's that divine balance I'm talking to you about. Meaning, Jesus just told him off. You know, you ever had somebody get on your nerve and you're like, how long do I got to deal with you? <laughs> you know, I mean, just, I mean, I'm so glad it's in there because it's letting you know that there's a part of God that even God gets a little tired sometimes. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, even the Lord be like, look, I just told you five times about this. And what's, what's the problem? But, but yet, obviously, without sin, because Jesus never sinned, so he didn't cuss, he didn't sin, but he did tell you exactly how he felt. And that was what? I am kind of I'm kind of tired of the of the fact that I've been walking the earth for three years and everybody know I heal people and you coming up to me talking about now if you can do anything. You know what he's saying to us? He's telling you, you've been you've been walking with the Lord for 20 years and you still coming to the Lord now. Now if you can do anything, if you can do anything, don't you he said, don't you know me by now? I'm God. I can do anything, it is, but I can do all things are possible, but I need your faith. I need you to believe. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen? And then, watch this. He says, bring him here to me. Bring him here to me. You know, I, again, I, I can't totally verify the inflection, but in my mind, I'm looking at it like, you know, just bring him here. Just, just bring him here. You know, it's kind of like, just bring him here. But, but, uh, and, and the Bible says, verse 18, Jesus rebuked the demon, and the demon departed out of the man. Amen. And the boy was cured that very yes. hour, right away. Amen? Amen. All right, let's, let's break this down. Let's look at this. In verses 14 and 15, we're going to review this story so we can get the, get the meat out of this. In verses 14 and 15, a man asked Jesus to heal his demonically possessed son. Say amen. amen. That's what happened, right? All right. Then in verse 16, the man tells Jesus that his disciples couldn't heal his son. In other words, the man went to Jesus with the problem. The man told Jesus that the people that were following Jesus couldn't heal the problem. And then in verse 17, uh, uh, Jesus reacts to what he hears and he denounces the lack of faith. Remember, he said, oh, 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 perverse uh, generation. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long do I have to suffer you? Now, we know that it means the man, but it, in my opinion, it also includes the other people around, and in some sense, even the apostles who couldn't do nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, it, it, notice, we know he's dealing with the man, but in a sense, when he says, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long do I have to suffer you? He didn't say, you two apostles. But let's face it, if they couldn't do anything with the man, then that's kind of an indictment on them too. Would you agree with me? Say amen. amen. And then in verse 18, what happens? Jesus heals the young man. Right? Did you notice that verse 18 didn't say that Jesus said a long prayer? Did you notice in verse 18 it just said that Jesus rebuked the demon yes. and the demon departed out of him? Yes. In, in, in other words, it, it was a confidence that Jesus had. And so, so when you have that much confidence, when you're dealing with people that don't have that kind of confidence, you're looking at them like, what's wrong? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, well, what's wrong? Don't y'all see that all you got to do is believe and you, and you can speak to that demon? In other words, I stopped by to tell you here today, what's wrong? D doesn't the church really believe that you can actually cast out demons? I said, what's wrong? Don't you know that in the name of Jesus, when you're dealing with something, you can be bold enough to say, 
be gone in the name of Jesus. And, and, and listen, I don't care how powerful the devil is or how powerful demons are. They shake in their boots when they hear the name of Jesus. They are subject to the authority of Jesus. In fact, if you read the scripture, you see time and time again that the demons are saying, who? Jesus, oh, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't cast this out before our time. Oh, Jesus, don't. In other words, the devil and all the demons, I stand in Jesus. Yes. Right. Yes. And if you operate in his authority, they'll be scared of you too. Yes. That's right. yes. I said they'll be scared of you too. Yes. And they know who's operating in their authority. It's in the Bible. Yes. They say, Jesus we know. Paul we know. But wait a minute, you faker, you a faker over here. You, who are you? Well, we don't know you. You know, you, you, you sons of Sceva, we don't know you. So you have to know Jesus. You have to, and so Jesus was kind of rebuking his own disciples, saying that y'all should have been confident enough to, to, to cast this out. Yes. Now let's look at it, verse 19. Then the disciples, now, 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 I told you Jesus heals a young man, but he rebuked everybody. So now we're going to find out what happened. Verse 19. Then the disciples, Jesus' disciples, came to him. Apart, I mean, away from after the fact, after the scene was all over with, right? And they asked him, just like you would ask him, what happened? Why couldn't we? So, there you go. I think I'm right by saying that part of that rebuke was to them. Because they asked him, why could we not cast him out? What does that mean? If they asked him that question, then they know that there was the possibility that they should have been able to because we know earlier Jesus sent them out and what happened? They did cast some demons out, right? And they came back rejoicing and said, Jesus, even the, the, the demons are subject to us. They were like, hey! And Jesus was like, okay, be cool. Be cool, guys. Be cool. Just, just rejoice that your names are written in the land. Look like, don't get the big head. But, but they know that they, if they operated in faith, they had the ability to do it. Now they go to Jesus and say, wait a minute, something happened. So they said, let's not talk in front of these people. They go after the fact, let's go talk to Jesus. What, what, what happened? And Jesus said to them, look at this, because of your unbelief. So I, there you go, I think I'm right. Okay. When he made that indictment and he said that, oh, faithless and perverse generation, he wasn't just talking to the daddy. He wasn't just talking to all those people around. He was also talking to his disciples who couldn't do nothing. He said, he said, you couldn't do anything because of your unbelief. What am I trying to tell us today? I'm trying to tell us that sometimes we don't realize that in all our church going and in all our praying, that somewhere down on the inside, there's still some unbelief about what the Lord is able to do. He said, because of your unbelief, truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed. Boy, I'm, boy, I'm telling you, a faith of a grain of a mustard seed. They said the mustard seed is one of the tiniest seeds in, in all of the seeds that you can have. But, but, but given its planting and its watering, it can become a great tree that carries forth great branches and houses a lot of birds. My point is, what God is really trying to tell us is, you got to be careful to at least just, it might not be no big seed of faith, but just even a little seed of pure faith, God can work with it, yeah. give him some praise. That's all he says, just give, me, just give me a pure seed. Just give me a seed of faith and I can work with it, says the Lord. Yeah. In other words, pure seed, not I have belief, but help me with my unbelief. Yeah. I believe, but I don't believe. Hey, don't, don't give him no mixed fruit. Don't give him I believe and I don't believe. Just give him I believe and let him. Don't give him mixed fruit. Give him a real. Listen, don't, don't give him an a apple and orange. Don't give him a, you know, get, don't, don't, don't mix the fruit up. Just, just don't be apple, give him apple. And then he'll take that and he'll make it into something. He said, if you just give me a grain of a mustard seed. He said, now watch this. Here it is. Now here's the proof that you have that grain. He said, you will say to this mountain, move. Somebody say move. move. You, ever, you, ever, you, you ever be, you know, re you ever really needed to get something done and you have to kind of exert yourself a little bit. Like I was telling you all about my visit at the hospital earlier this week and I, I was trying to get some stuff done. I was being holy and godly and everything else. But I believe that there's a place in God where you have to be a little aggressive. There's a place in God where you have to be a little assertive. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent 
taking it by force. There's a place where when you need something to really happen, if you see your loved one there and they're hurting, you see your loved one there and they're down, there's a place where you got to get violent with a demon. There's a place where you got to step up and tell somebody, no, you seeing my wife tonight. In fact, you seeing her right now. No, you opening a room up right now 